Patron Robert Williams asked, Could you explain the Van Allen radiation belt so that moon landing deniers might understand that it's a sea of ionized particles and that gamma rays and x-rays are unaffected by Earth's magnetic fields, thus are not meaningful part of the belts? Okay, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> Hello again, astronauts. Welcome to Bad Astra, a wacky science channel where we learn about physics with more costume changes than math. On Wednesdays, we release videos ranging from the Bad Answers series, where we answer viewer-submitted questions, to interviews with scientists about their research, to science-related music videos when we're feeling extra ambitious. Our main content comes once a month in the form of deep dives on scientific topics, from the life cycle of stars, to vaccines, to the history of the universe. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, share, and check out our Patreon for early access to videos and exclusive content. different. X-rays and gamma rays are photons, or light, while the Van Allen radiation belts are made up of matter, mainly protons in the inner belt and protons and electrons in the outer belt. Light isn't deflected by magnetic fields because it doesn't have a charge, so gamma rays and X-rays aren't meaningfully affected by Earth's magnetic fields. However, high-energy X-rays and gamma rays are absorbed by Earth's atmosphere. With that out of the way, let's talk about the Van Allen radiation belts, because they're actually pretty cool. The Van Allen radiation belts were discovered by Explorer 1, the first American satellite, and named after the lead scientist on the mission, James Van Allen. These belts are two donut-shaped regions of energetic charged particles surrounding Earth. Solar winds, or energetic particles expelled by the sun, get trapped by Earth's magnetic field, or magnetosphere, forming the outer belt. Cosmic rays, or energetic particles from outside of our solar system, interact with Earth's atmosphere, forming the inner belt. These belts surround and protect Earth, forming a nearly impenetrable barrier, blocking the highest energy electrons from reaching the surface. However, the Van Allen belts also pose a danger to satellites and astronauts, since radiation can damage tiny circuitry and increase cancer risk in humans. Now, the astronauts in the ISS orbit well below the normal boundary of the inner belt, but solar storms can expand the belts for short periods of time. Because of radiation from both the Van Allen belts and other cosmic radiation, astronauts have a lifetime limit of time. <laughs> astronauts have a lifetime limit of the time they can spend in space, and satellites have radiation shielding in order to protect their instruments. For the Apollo missions, several crews passed through the Van Allen belts, but only spent a short time in the intensive radiation zone because their trajectory was designed to pass through the thinnest known parts. Like nuclear tourism, a short time spent in a place with higher radiation only increases your cancer risk by a little bit. It's all about mitigating risk. As with everything, further study was needed. So in 2012, the Van Allen probes were launched to study these radiation belts, and scientists learned a ton. Electrons of different energies end up in different regions, so the belts are not homogenous. In fact, the Van Allen belts are different sizes and shapes, depending on the energy level of the electrons detected. The outer belt tends to have higher energy electrons, and the inner belt lower energy particles. When just measuring the highest energy electrons, the inner belt doesn't show up at all. The Van Allen probes also found that there is less overall radiation in the belts than previously thought, and that the most energetic electrons in the inner belt only spend a short time there. Basically, the inner belt is a lot safer than we thought, so satellites orbiting at that radius might require less shielding than previously assumed. We also discovered that very low frequency waves, or radio communications waves, coming from Earth due to human activity 
might actually shield against high energy particles, both in the belts and from solar storms. The VLF, or radio signal bubble's outer boundary, is almost exactly aligned with the inner edge of the Van Allen belts. And back in the 60s, when VLF communications were more limited, the inner belt was measured as extending closer to Earth. This provides a possible way to protect satellites and even electronics on Earth from massive solar storms, with VLF transmissions being used to reduce radiation from the near-Earth environment during times when the sun sends huge blasts of charged particles towards Earth. But human activity doesn't always reduce the radiation in near-Earth space. Before high-altitude nuclear bomb tests were banned in 1966, Yes, for a while, we thought irradiating our atmosphere was a good idea. These nuclear bomb tests measurably altered the Earth's magnetic fields and even created temporary belts which stayed in place for weeks or even years. Although the particles in these artificial belts had different energies than the OG Van Allen belts, they also damaged satellites in the same way a solar storm would. Why wait for a solar flare to destroy expensive space technology when we can do it ourselves? For more information on solar storms, check out our video on Betelgeuse going supernova. Because, of course, that's where we put that information. Here at Bad Astro, we do science, not organization. Earth isn't alone in having radiation belts. Other planets and moons in our own solar system also have radiation belts, although they aren't well understood or mapped. I can show you this picture of Jupiter's radiation belts, but can't give you a comprehensive list of all the worlds with radiation belts. Basically, worlds with strong enough magnetic fields to trap energetic particles will have radiation belts, because space is full of these cosmic rays. <laughs> Astra out. To the stars, to the stars.